Hi, I'm Kristen Wilson from Index Data. I'm the project manager for ReShare, and I'm going to be doing a demo for you of our ReShare 1.0 software release. If you haven't seen it already, I'd recommend that you watch the demo of our beta release to get a sense for the overall flow of the system and how a basic end-to-end -end request works. This demo will focus more on individual features that have been completed for the 1.0 release. You can find a link to the beta demo in the description for this video. I'm going to begin this demo in our ReShare shared index. And I'm also going to be doing this demo using the environment that we're setting up for a pilot that's going to be done by the Policy Library Consortium. So for this pilot, we've been working on getting the ReShare environment configured for four different libraries, Millersville, Temple, Seton Hall, and the New School. And a lot of our work this quarter has really focused on deployment and getting this environment configured correctly so that we can begin piloting. So for that reason, a lot of work this quarter is really behind the scenes, and I'll try to highlight that as I go through the demo. So here in the shared index, I'm going to open up our shared inventory app and search for a title to illustrate some of the work that we've been doing to get more metadata into the shared index. So you can see here on this title, we've got four different holdings records, two from Temple, one from Millersville, and one from Seton Hall. So we've been working on getting uh, the Seton Hall metadata into the system and also getting a complete harvest of Temple and Millersville into the system, along with detailed location information for all of our holdings. We've also been working on getting the new school's holdings in here, and we have a sample of records from both Seton Hall and the new school loaded, and we'll be loading the complete collections for both of those libraries very shortly. Having more data in the system lets us see our match algorithm working in more with more frequency, so we can see a lot more records that have been matched and have a lot of holdings on them. And we can also see the different locations and get a sense for where this item is actually held. The other benefit we've realized from loading metadata into our shared index is that we now have covered the basis on the primary ways that we expect libraries to be delivering their metadata to us in ReShare. So we have two libraries, Temple and Millersville, who we are harvesting metadata from using OAI PMH. And then we have the other two libraries, New School and Seton Hall, who are putting their data on an FTP site. So we will support both of those delivery mechanisms and we have both of those working right now. The other uh, main difference that we've seen in the record loads is that some libraries are delivering their data as MARC XML, and some are delivering their data as raw MARC files. And so we're now supporting both of those use cases as well. And we expect that as we go forward and begin onboarding more libraries, the process of mapping and getting the data loaded into a consortial shared index will become a lot faster. For the next part of the demo, I'm going to move into our ViewFind search tool. ViewFind is an open source discovery tool that we're using to create a patron-facing consortial search for ReShare. I'll search for the same example I was using in the shared index, and you can see that ViewFind has taken that shared index metadata and put it into a patron-friendly format where items can be requested from one of the consortial partners. During the past quarter, we've really focused on UI development for ViewFind. We've created a new theme for policy that can be adapted to be used by other libraries or consortia. We've also changed the way that we export metadata from the shared index into ViewFind, and that's enabled a number of other search features, including these suggested topics and a large number of facets and filters. When I click on a title, I can see additional metadata about the title, similar items, and each library and location where it's available. We know that not every library that uses ReShare is going to want to use a separate search tool for consortial discovery. So we're also using ViewFind's built-in OAI PMH endpoint to offer a way for libraries to harvest the data in their consortial shared index and integrate it into a local or commercial discovery tool. Before I leave ViewFind, I'll go ahead and place a request just so that you can see what that looks like. When I click on the request button, the request confirmation screen comes up and I can choose a pickup location, 
and a date needed by for this request. ReShare's Open URL Resolver creates an open URL that pushes a new request into the ReShare system. I'll now move over into the ReShare system, and this is where the bulk of the processing of requests will occur. If I click on the Request app, I can see all of the requests placed by patrons of Temple University, which is the library that I'm acting as. Here at the top of the list, I can see the request that we just placed for critics on Keats. One of the new features that we've added to the request and supply apps for our MVP release are a few features to make it easier for libraries to identify requests that need attention or are in an exceptional workflow and to address those requests. One of the components we've added are badges, and you can see here that several of the requests that we're looking at have a badge. The badge with a number indicates that the request has unread messages, and the badge with an exclamation point indicates that the request needs attention because it's in a state that is outside of normal workflows and requires a response. So in this example, we can see that loan conditions have been applied to this request and the requester needs to view those conditions and either accept them or reject them. We can also combine the count and the exclamation point to indicate that a request both needs attention and has a number of unread messages. We've also added filters for these badges so we can easily see everything that needs attention and we can easily see everything that has unread messages or both. And that will just make it easier for a library staff member to be able to look through the list of requests and easily identify things that might need special handling. I'm now going to move to the directory app to show you some of the enhancements that we've worked on there. I'll open up the, the directory entry for Temple University and show you a little bit about what can be found on this record. The directory entry is where each university can store information about itself, contact information, branches that are part of the library, and services that are needed to support reshare. The main thing that we've worked on over the last quarter is enhancing the ability for users to edit these records. I'm going to click on the Actions button and click Edit. And we now have a, a nice full screen edit display where a library can edit and update its information. One thing that I'll point out while we're here is that we've also implemented the use of ISIL symbols as our primary lending symbols for reshare. ISIL is a, an, an international standard. It's the international standard identifier for libraries. It's also used in MARC records in certain data fields. And we decided that rather than create a new namespace and a new set of symbols for reshare, we would implement this, this existing standard. And so we've done that for all of our pilot libraries. We can still add additional symbols to this record and include things like OCLC symbols or other lending symbols for different resource sharing networks. And that will support future interoperability. We also have the ability to add contact information to this record, including addresses. And we've also tried to be um, consistent with international standards here as well. So when I enter an address, I can select the location for that address and I'll get a set of fields that make sense for that locality. So this is the USA. And if I switch this over to England, I can see I have a slightly different set of fields. We also now have the ability to add service accounts to these directory entries, and this gets a little bit more into the configuration of the system, but this lets us do things like associate an ISO 1866 address with this directory entry, and also our own statistic service, which is used for load balancing. There are other services we can list here as well, including NSIP and Z3950. So basically this kind of paints a picture of how to connect with this library, and that information can be used within ReShare, but also shared with other lending networks for, again, to support future interoperability. The other thing that we've accomplished related to our directory is the ability to share updates to the directory across the network. So if I were to make a change to Temple's directory entry, that change would then spider out across the network and everybody's directory would be updated without anyone having to take action. And so that just makes it easy for the system to stay updated across the entire consortium.
Now I'm going to move into the settings app and just quickly show some of the settings that we've been working on that again are focused on adding enhanced functionality to our request process. One of the things that we've completed this quarter is a cancellation autoresponder. So we've established the concept of autoresponders to uh, send ISO 18626 messages in particular circumstances and basically to save a person the trouble of having to do that themselves. So we already have our default autoresponder, which will reply um, with either a will supply or a cannot supply message based on a real-time availability check when a request first comes in. We've now implemented a cancellation autoresponder, which if a cancellation is requested, we'll check to see whether or not that request has already been shipped. And if it has not been shipped, then it will automatically ac accept the cancellation. So if I go back into the request app here, I can click on a request that is in process. And so I can see that this is in an expects to supply state, which means that the supplier is uh, locating and getting ready to ship the item. And so I can choose to cancel a request and that will send uh, an ISO 18626 message to the supplier. Because the supplier has their autoresponder enabled, they'll immediately send a message back to me. And if I request this, I can see that this is now in a canceled state and we've come to the end of this request. So that's just a nice little tool that saves somebody on the supplying side from having to go in and manually click a button to accept that request. Moving back into settings, uh, we're also working on uh, a couple settings that are, will be the foundation for different types of email notices. So we've created a template editor for patron notices. So these would be notices that will let your patrons know if a request has been placed, so a request confirmation, and will also support a request unfilled notice at this time. And then we'll be able to add different types of notices uh, as we continue to develop out this functionality. So when I click on request confirmation, I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this so we can see a bigger view. And so you can see that this is just a nice little email template editor where we can give the template a name, we can make it active or inactive, and then we can define a subject line and the body of an email. And we can also use tokens to, um, to represent variable data in the message. So things like an item title or the name of a patron. And when I click preview, that just gives me a, a sense of what this message will look like with the tokens filled in. And this is a good example of how ReShare has really been able to benefit from being built on the Folio platform. This template editor was already in use as part of the Folio circulation modules. And so we were able to take that code and adapt it for a ReShare use case. And that really helped us get a jump start on this functionality. In our next release, we'll be working on actually sending these emails. So this is really just about the settings that are needed to be able to get those emails sent out. I'll also show you pull slip notifications. And so this is a notification that is for staff purposes to let library staff members know when there are unprinted pull slips in the system that they need to uh, print out so they can go and search for those materials. And I'll click on this example, and again, I'll go into the edit screen so you can see that. Um, basically, what these notice delivery templates let you do is define particular days and times when certain pull slip notifications will be developed. So in this case, for Temple University, we are looking at a, a delivery notice for Charles Library, and we can see that this is set to be sent every day except Saturday at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., and it's just for materials that are actually located in the Charles Library. And we can define one or more email addresses where this, no this notification will be sent. And each library can configure as many of these notices as it wants. You can do one for each location. If you really just have one unit doing all of your polling, you can do a single notification. So there's a lot of flexibility here. 
And again, as we work on uh, email sending in the next quarter, we'll be able to take these settings and turn this into a notification that's actually being sent out to users in the test environment. The last thing that I'll briefly show is some of the work that we've done on permissions for reshare. So I'm going to bring up uh, a user in this system and I'll edit their user record so that you can see how permissions work. So when I go to add permission, I can see all of the permissions available in the system and whether or not they've been assigned to this particular user. There's a lot of permissions in here that relate to folio functionality that we've borrowed from. So not all of these are relevant to reshare and we'll need to find a way to clean those up in the future. But for our reshare specific apps, we've been implementing a default set of permissions that gives us kind of a starting point for understanding permissions and seeing if there are other permissions we'll need in the future. So basically for each one of the apps that we have across the top of the screen here, we can uh, enable the app or not. So you can give your users access to only the apps that they need. And if the module is enabled, the user will also view only permissions. We'll also have create and edit permissions for each app. And then we'll also have a settings permission for each app as well. So you can limit which users have access to those more administrative settings. And we'll be continuing to look at permissions as part of our pilot to understand if we need more granular permissions or different types of permissions, but this gives us a good starting point. Before I wrap up, the last thing I'll mention is that we've also spent a little bit of time in this past quarter working on a pilot integration with the library data platform, which is a tool that's being developed at index data to support reporting in Folio and reshare. The LDP is an external database that is optimized for reporting and essentially will be able to push data out of reshare and into the LDP on a periodic basis to create a series of snapshots that can then be used for reporting and analytics. And we'll be working more on that this quarter to, to look at getting this up and running with our policy test environment. And there's also work being done to develop an app within the Folio or Reshare systems that can be used to access the LDP directly from within the staff interface. That wraps up this video demo. Thanks for watching and for your interest in the Reshare project. For more information, please email us at info at projectreshare.org.